One exercise we've been doing to get a good gauge of our rookie draft values is going back in history in ADP right after the NFL draft and seeing what players were landing where and getting a feel of the hit rates, getting to see how these drafts were going. Of course, it's ADP and some leagues' drafts were different than others and mine were sure different than the ADP. But you know what? It's a good gauge of the value of the market and maybe gives us a good feel of what the hit rates are going to feel like coming towards our rookie drafts here in a few weeks. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're going to be in the second round. If you want to see the vids from the first round when we did this, go check the archives. It's a couple weeks away at pre-combine. And we're using February ADP for the rookies for this year because those videos use that and we want to stay streamlined here. But go ahead and check those out. They have the same thumbnail, just different players compared to this one here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Keishon Boutte, 201 as of February ADP. And in 2022, we had Rashad White going in this range. Late first round, early second round. I like to say him in a range when we're doing this because that's more realistic. So that's where he was going. Had a big pump up after the draft. Third round pick, pass catching running back. A lot of people like Rashad White. And you know what? He gave you a decent return on investment in terms of value. Gave you some production last year. Not huge production, but gave you something in return early in his career. And we got a good base case of what's going on now with him. Because right now, he's the lead guy in the backfield. And they may draft another running back. They may bring another guy in. In 2021, we got Rondell Moore. And he went kind of high in drafts. He was a second rounder, though. 201, 202, 203. Wasn't really in the first round much. He was a guy I was spending second round picks on. And you know what? Flatliner. I wasn't really living up to the production. There have been times throughout his career, like three-week windows, four-week windows, where he was seeing some production, and then he would get hurt. That's what we saw out of him in Purdue. But this guy was hyper-athletic. Good speed, really short though, and he was really productive during the early stages of his collegiate career. A profile that you're just going to shoot your shot on, and at the value here, early second round is something you're going to be looking at. T. Higgins, 2020, 201, and there were a lot of debates on T. Higgins back in the day. I was buying him in drafts left and right. I was snagging him in the first round. He was falling to the seconds. There were times I was getting him and Joe Burrow. I would get Joe Burrow with my super flex pick in the early first round and then snag him up in the second round, had them stacked, and that was one of my big gets. Rondell Moore is probably one of my misses. T. Higgins was one of my big gets. Rashad White was a diversify guy. Going here to the next year, 2019, Hakeem Butler, a fourth-round wide receiver, 201 range, say range, early second, mid-second, I don't say late first. I don't think he even went that high up. But Keem Butler, a lot of people liked in the draft process. Made some big plays during his time at Iowa State. Fell in the draft. Not a huge separator. A big contested catch guy. And that did not meticulate to the NFL game. Now he's in other leagues right now. Michael Gallup, 201. Loved his prospect profile. Very productive at Colorado State, early breakout age. The prospect profile you want from a wide receiver, just sheer production, good market share, and he was a guy I was in on, of course. Of course, you already know just because of how I value the analytics. Breakout age, high in market share, and he was a G5 guy, but we're not paying up for the G5. Samaji P. Ryan, 201. That's going to surprise some folks who weren't drafting back in 2017. But this dude was going in the first round some drafts. This dude was also falling a little bit farther than the 201 in some drafts. I think I had a rookie draft where he went late first. And he was a running back. Running back with not the greatest draft capital, not the greatest 40 time. But he's a big, thick boy. Catch the ball in the backfield a little bit. Had that huge game where he had over 400 yards rushing. And honestly... Samaji P. Ryan was a surpriser because a lot of people were expecting a lot more out of him. Didn't hit. He was a diversified guy, not a guy we were really clamoring for. I wasn't doing YouTube videos back then, but he was just a, a rando diversify guy. 202. Sean Tucker in ADP in February. I feel like that's dropping because he got drafted in 
12 range to 10 range in the last mock we did that was sent to us. But here we go in 2022, John Mechie here. And the injury really set him back. But he was drafted in the second round from a premier Power 5 school. Decent metrics here. Not a top tier guy, but also slamming these wide receivers in that 2022 class is something you wanted to do. Trey Sermon in 2021. People fought battles over him. People drafted him in the first round. Mid-round back who went to that Shanahan offense. People clamored for him. He got overdrafted in Dynasty. He was one of those players that I wanted to have as a diversify guy, but the price got too hot. It got too hot and it got too quick, and I wasn't in on that. I don't have any shares. And if I do, it was because he just fell to obscurity and he was a pickup. Didn't draft him, didn't trade for him, nothing like that. I liked him at Oklahoma, and then he went to Ohio State, I'm an Ohio State guy, watched him play. But you know what? He didn't really have the athleticism, the pop, and the step. And then Denzel Mims. One of my misses, but I didn't pay to a two form. I feel like there's just a big arc of different drafters with him. Like some people were really, really high on him, drafting him in the first. Some guys were drafting him in, in a mid to late second. There were other wide receivers in this draft in ADP that we'll come across that I was drafting over him. But Denzel Mims was a guy I was getting. He was a guy I was advocating for. I'm not going to lie about that. And I do have videos on him. I did like Denzel Mims' profile. Good breakout aids, good production profile, good athleticism. Just didn't stick. Also, an older wide receiver coming out. That was the thing. A Baylor wide receiver, which you don't judge the helmet on a player, but something to note. And then Marquise Brown, 2019, at the 202 spot, late first, early second, going to the Ravens from Oklahoma. And then James Washington, 2018, that burnt a lot of people. There were some people that were really high on him. I had him as a diversified guy. Like, he wasn't on the list to get, but he was a list to pivot off to to add different pieces to your multiple different dynasty teams. Not a guy you're hunting for. But James Washington, Blitnikoff winner, decent production, looked like he was primed to get air yards. None of that happened. None of that happened. And now he's fading to obscurity. Chris Godwin, 202. People were clamoring to get him. I don't know how ADP is at 202 here. When he was going to first round, a lot of my leagues. He was going to first round, a lot of my leagues. He was hard to get. He was a hard asset to get. A lot of people were going after him. Good breakout age, good production metrics. Penn State was putting out wide receivers. He was a hard guy to get. A 202, I would consider that a, a good price tag. But I don't feel like that was the price in, in my leagues where I was at. Maybe different from you. 202 indicates that he's falling farther than this and also getting drafted higher than this. He was a guy that was hard to get in leagues back then. Going to the 203, Michael Mayer in ADP in this spot. Probably needs to be cheaper, though. And then David Bell, 2022. I probably am responsible for that one. That's one of my guys. It's not looking good. Not looking good. Uh, too many mouths to feed in a low-volume passing offense right now. Athleticism score did not hit. Everything else did look good. Not a good rookie year of production, though. That's one thing to note. But things could change off drop of a hat. Trey Lance, quarterback, mid, early second round, rushing production. This is one QB, remember. That's not too bad. Good value. Quarterbacks are quarterbacks in one QB, so you kind of just take them at value and what's on the board. Brandon IU 2020. So he had some moments at Arizona State where he would just blow up and he would get that yak instantly. He had a lot of bursts. And this guy came out of value in leagues because he came out a little bit older, was drafted in the first round. Not many people pegged that, and it surprised some folks, but you were still able to catch him at a discount. It was later in the first as well. It was a good value there, a good wide receiver to go after, and there was a good mix of wide receivers in this range, so you were kind of like diversifying between them. Andy Isabella, 2019-203. That was a miss for me, but I wasn't paying this much. He was a guy that would fall a little bit in drafts because some guys did not want to draft the height here, but he did have a good production profile, a good athleticism score, but from a G5 school. G5 wide receivers will burn you, and they're not going to always hit. They will have that sexy production profile. They will have those sexy metrics, but those G5 wide receivers, they got a good rate of burning you. 
and they don't transition as quick, and not all of them, though, because some of them will just hit off the rip and just leave you burnt, and they will burn you one way or the other. That's the thing about G5 wide receivers. You really got to be smart with the value. You got to be smart with the player. I did get some shares of him. He burnt me up. Some of these guys are going to burn you up. Anthony Miller, 2018. He was a player from Memphis. I thought of him more of as a compiler, but he did put up some good numbers in his collegiate days. Just nothing materialized. Nothing did throughout his career. He was a guy I wasn't really going after. A lot of people did, though, and I think he went a little bit higher than this. I think some people draft him in the late first. Now that I think about some drafts that I saw back in the day, back during that time. Next guy here, Curtis Samuel, 2017. The funny thing about this, I remember there were Spider-Man memes. Then You know, the Spider-Man memes when the Spider-Mans are pointing at each other. And they're looking light of him and Christian McCaffrey. Think about him. Good athleticism. The production profile wasn't that grand from Ohio State, but this dude's electric. And if he hit, he was going to hit big. And he's had his moments throughout his career, but nothing really materialized to what we wanted. But from this range of the draft, the hit rate's very low historically over time even past 2017 so you're not really expecting to get gangbusters from these picks going to the 204 here and look at it it's josh down some of you guys love him some of you guys really love him and i understand i think he's a fabulous wide receiver but going down here damian pierce in 2022 the buzz went off the chain in the summer early in may and stuff he wasn't really jumping up boards, but he jumped up boards quite a bit with the draft capital. That's where you really want to hammer on with the running backs. He was a fourth rounder, but he was a high-end fourth rounder. And he was in a spot there where you could tell he was going to be the guy. You can tell he was going to get the opportunity. And then that really came in the summer, and that just kept snowballing. And then eventually he landed up in the first round of rookie drafts if people were drafting back then. A few were. Damian Pierce's value went up. He's a diversified piece once we figured out that landing spot. And then Justin Fields in 2021. With quarterbacks, you just take the value where they're at. That's just what you do. They fall a little bit, you take them. If you don't need one, you don't. That's just what you do in one QB, two QB. I'm all over him. I'm Ohio State guy. I think he's one of the best Ohio State quarterbacks of all time. Not the best Ohio State quarterback of all time. Archel Easter is the home town guy from where i'm at so yeah high state guys is what i'm at with and i was big on justin fields and i still am michael pittman another guy i was going after probably my fourth video on the channel i started this really going hard on it 2020 ish and i had think he was like my fourth video my first video that i think broke a thousand views was on michael pittman and honestly i was drafting him i was diversifying to him from him he was in that mix Nico Hardman, 2019. People paid up for him because he went to the Chiefs. I saw him go in the first round some leagues, like the 110 range, somewhere around there in some leagues, and some people fading him. The production profile wasn't there. The speed was there. The Chiefs offense was there. People paid up for Miko Hardman. And then 2018, Dante Pettis. Some people loved him. Some people hated him, like me. Some people loved him, some people hate him. The people who were all in on the film loved him. People who were all in the metrics hated him. He was very slight. Um, the production profile wasn't really there from Washington. And Dante Pettis screamed as a risk, and we saw then results. 2017, Kareem Hunt fell in the draft here. Remember, from a max school, mid-round draft capital-ish. So really, the... Value kind of right, but I think it was underdone here. I think he could have went higher in a few spots in ADP, but I think in some leagues he did go higher, and it was incredible value then. It was incredible value. Very good production numbers from, from the Mac. Very good production numbers. Watched him throughout his career there, and honestly looked good from start to beginning, but sometimes you catch these small schoolers at a value, and you're able to catch them in Dynasty as a value as well. Kareem Hunt also... Had that incident in, back in Cleveland, and that really sucked some of the value away. But he was trending as being one of the top running backs in the NFL and looked like it was going to be for a bit. Then that happened, and we lost out of a career. We did, and he did. He did. That's his fault, though. So that's it. That is it. That is picks 201 to the 204. We'll do another video 
205 to I think around 208 range, doing four picks at a time so we don't drown you with players from the past. Make sure you smash that subscribe button on the way out. It helps the channel, helps build the following, and it's going to help you out building your dynasty teams. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.